Welcome to Random Bits 50. 50! I can't believe I've made 50 of these already. Huh. Oh well. It's almost been a year actually, because I think I started like early October. It's mid-September. Anyway, so I started this about 11 months ago. That's... That's not that... That's actually not that long ago to have 50 videos already. Oh well. It's interesting to think about because a year ago, oh, I started it. Be I started random bits whenever I skinned my shin. That hurt. Yeah, I have been getting into scythes. There are a lot of really interesting videos on the internet about how to cut your lawn extremely efficiently with scythes. Something fuzzy. Oh, there's something fuzzy on there. Look at that little caterpillar. So I've been thinking about making a little anvil so I can peen the blade on those and seeing if I, can, if I can use that instead of weed whacking. But what I was doing before was over here. I was testing out my reel mower on the woods. Or at least the area that I don't mow around the woods. Because actually surprisingly the woods haven't really grown up that much. I just had to mow this area right here but this area back here hasn't really grown up at all. I've been messing with the, the reel mower, dialing it in and uh, slowly tightening up the blades and stuff a lot more. And it's cutting better and better. I only have to go over like two or three times to cut, uh, to cut through stuff. Well, I cut through most of it the first time, but then there's still like 10% of it left, so I have to keep going over it. And there's a couple ones sticking up usually. Oh, hey. I know that's a nice colored frog. That's really cool. Oh, fucking hell. See, the, the big issue I have is this right here. It always digs down and it's basically cutting a line through the dirt. It's really annoying. It's actually rounding that rod there. So I'm going to have to finally figure out something to fix that. Because that's just not going to work. Unfortunately, my yard has a lot of little holes in it, so the, the mower catches and stuff, and it's really annoying. So the only place I had to push it really fast, you see what I, was gonna, what I was doing was I was tightening down the blade, so then it would get tighter and tighter, and I would run it until it would slowly wear the, the blade smooth, and that helps it quite a bit. Well, anyway, I did that on here, because it's nice and smooth and it's easy for it to get a grip. But I had to clear off all of the grass going between the cracks first. I did that with just a shovel. But this brings up a project I've been wanting to do. I've been wanting to build like a, a crane type machine that can pick up blocks, really heavy blocks, like this one up here. Ever since I put it down and I sprayed it and I dug out a bunch and sprayed it underneath it, it really hasn't settled down much more, even though I put a bunch of weight on it. So I'm going to build like a big machine, a crane, to lift it up, even like a foot or so, so I can push some dirt on one side or scrape some dirt off the other. And then I could, it'd be a machine so I could lift up sidewalk pavers or whatever they're called, and I can level them. I could do that with this, this one too. This would be like six different pieces, so that'd be easier. That's just an idea for a future video. It's been, the weather's been really weird. Tonight it's supposed to get like 40 degrees. That's crazy. That's almost freezing. That's Fahrenheit, of course. It's like two. Uh, that'd be like, oh, I don't know, 
4 or 5 degrees Celsius. It's been really cold. Remember how a few weeks ago when I went to the town-wide yard sale and one of the people that had a yard sale also had a pile of junk and he gave it all to me? Well, he sent me an email and he had a bunch more junk for me, which is pretty awesome. This stuff's even cooler than last time. Now this stuff right here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six record players, an empty RCA camcorder case, VCR, dot matrix printer from the 1980s, a, a radio from probably the late 1970s or so, a camcorder, so there's another camcorder, oh yeah, there's another cam camcorder right there, a heater and some other little bits and bobs. This is like a cheapy virtual reality headset, I don't know. But over here is all the ones that I think are the best. Okay, so I got 1970s radio, another 1970s radio, 1960s telephones. I believe this is like 1970s telephone. Some nice little connectors for circuit boards. This old radio with the schematics. This oscilloscope. It looks like the 1960s or so. It's an RCA 00-55A. Then up here we have a Heathkit MM1 multimeter. Goes up to 1500 volts. Now that's a lot. Over here we have a nice little radio. That looks in pretty good condition. But right here is a thing that uh, it takes the cake. This is the best thing. It's an IBM 3180 terminal. This is what you would use to connect to an IBM mainframe. I believe it's System 32. I wonder if I could hook it up to my original IBM PC and run an emulator on there to where it, I could run my original IBM PC as the mainframe and run this off the IBM PC. I could have my own network. That'd be awesome. This entire casing is like a can't tell if it's plastic or metal. I think this might be plastic, but this is metal down there. It was just sitting on the ground for about three months because I kind of, I, he sent me an email. I, he told me about all this stuff about a week after I got it last time, but I forgot about it. And so a lot of this stuff got damaged because of my fault. I'm not going out, but oh well. I didn't go and pick it up quick enough, but this is awesome. And this is awesome too. I only have one oscilloscope and it's from 1955 it's a Philco I think of a Philco radio yeah Philco this right most of these record players will probably be useless and I'll probably rip them open but this one right here there's a bunch of old tubes in it and it's pretty heavy so I don't know I might keep that just because it's so old this is so awesome it's all very wet so I'm thinking I'm going to put it in my shed and let it sit for a little bit and then I'll make a video about them later. If you live in the Illinois area and you're looking for record players or old radios or something, let me know. I mean, you can probably have them for free or trade. Oh my, look at this. Now that's an old tube. I've only found like one or two of these so far. And I think the only ones I found were broken in the creek. This is the only intact one I found. This is an old tube. Probably from the 1930s or 40s. Most of the other tubes I have are from the 50s or so. So pretty much all the stuff aside from the IBM terminal, the oscilloscope, and well, that's it. On the table, I put inside the shed. And all the stuff that's on the ground, I put on top of these skids underneath this tarp. They were just on the ground for the past three months, so, just, so this is much better. Because those items I'll most likely tear apart and strip the parts out of. I'm really interested to see about this oscilloscope though. Before we open this up, I want to show you some other stuff I got. I picked up some magnetic recording tape, which is pretty good. I have a lot of it, but it's always pretty useful. I rarely get it in the small spools. I think I found it twice in the small spools. I also picked up a Hemingway 10 insulator. Most of mine are just Hemingway 42s. It's kind of interesting to get other ones. And I found this. It's a little S-Video to NTSC adapter. It has also audio coming out. 
It's for it came with a laptop, but I thought I couldn't pass that up. That thrift store which I got these at were seventy five percent off, so it's only like fifty cents or so for both these. But the biggest thing I purchased was fifteen dollars, and it's inside this box, almost brand new. It's gonna be very useful. It's a brand new soldering iron from about the nineteen fifties or sixties or so. It looks like it's almost never been used. It's 300 watts, just like my black American Beauty. It's pretty much the only one, the only type of ones that have really held up for, for my use, because like these small ones, they just don't have enough heat to do anything. They're useless. Comes with the piece of paper and stuff on it. Didn't just buy this. I judge at least 1950s, maybe 1940s. Oh, and it even came with the tested by paper on the cable, but I took that off. I say let's plug this in and see if it even works. There we go. Looks really awesome to me. It looks a lot less used than my normal one. Not counting on this one, the screw is kind of stuck, so I can't really change the tip. I really used up that tip, as you can see. So it's really awesome to have two 300 watt heavy duty soldering irons now. And this one seems pretty nice because it has this like heat stopper type thing it's a lot better than the other one because this one the handle does start to get a little hot but this one it didn't seem to get as warm which is nice you don't burn yourself on the handle a lot of people keep saying i should stop using these and i should move towards getting like a, a 30 dollar cheap chinese heiko soldering station type thing so to please them i'm going to build my own soldering station to control these i dug this out of my shed it's the control unit to a 1970s foil stamping machine my dad found in the garbage. What it's going to be is it'll have either on the side where it'll have like a holster for it and I'll have a dial right here with it'll be a temperature gauge or I can have it where it sticks inside but I don't know that doesn't look quite right. Anyway so I'll have a holster on either side and I'll have this on there. I'll remove the, the solenoid on the inside and this thing probably. So I have power. And then I can even have like a dimmer switch so I can adjust the temperature if I need to have a variable temperature. And then I'll probably get a cooking thermometer and probably get a really long one. I can have the dial right here so I can see the temperature. And I can have it somehow where the, the dial, the thermocouple or whatever, comes out to, the, to whatever side I have this on and it'll touch the tip. So, this will be in like the holster right here. I'll turn it on. This plug will be plugged in like in the side. That'll, that'll put power through it, start heating that up. And I'll be able to watch the thermometer going up. I think that'd be a great thing. I think this case would be perfect for it. It looks almost like the, the right shape for, for a soldering station anyway. Really heavy duty too. Anyway, let's get back to this. Okay, now let's try it. Going live. Powering on. Some of the tubes are glowing.
two of the tubes are glowing. Oh, now more are glowing. <gasps> oh, look at that. Oh, it's so cool. It's working. It just takes a little longer to warm up. Okay. Now I'm going to test whether or not this is going to shock me. So if I have to wear gloves or not. Ah. It's 35 volts going through there. So yes, I should wear gloves. Because otherwise this thing will shock me. I will add a grounding plug to this. I'll probably just remove the old plug and add a grounding plug. That'd be a lot easier. Now let's try to feed a signal into it. I have one of these plug and play video games. And I will connect it up to the video slot. I think that might be the video signal. It's just having issues because I can't go any higher than three, 2 kilohertz refresh rate. Hmm. Still pretty interesting. I think I've got it locked into the waveform of the NTSC video signal there. Of course, it's kind of bunched up, but at least it is staying in the same location. You can even see this little part right here going up and down. Don't know what that is. It still spazzes out a little bit, but oh well. It's the next day and I'm just too impatient. Let's turn this thing on before I take it apart. It's had about a day to dry out and there's a very small chance it'll blow up. So, let's turn it on. Whoa. Yeah, it's, it's bad. Mysterious blue smoke. Yay. Well, that'll be its own video. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya.